Hello, this uh, presentation is on GraphQL in Slink um, around the GraphQL core that I've been writing together with uh, Radu Kutescu in the last few weeks uh, or month even maybe. Um, so we're going to start with a presentation of what GraphQL is, a short introduction in case you're not familiar with it. Um, then I'll show a demo of a prototype that is based on this Sling GraphQL core and demonstrates some of its uh, important concepts. Uh, we'll discuss rendering. Uh, we'll see that we can do rendering both server side and client side. And I'll, I'll sh you know, I'll show some parts of the of the implementation, how it works, and how you what you need to know to uh, to work with it. So let's start with a, a short GraphQL intro. You can find more info in many places, obviously. It's just so to make sure you know we're on the same page about it. Uh, here's a typical um, GraphQL client. This is GraphQL, which is uh, very often used as an interactive client to, to do queries. So GraphQL is a query language. On the left side here, you see a GraphQL query. Um, and the nice thing is that the, the shape uh, of the query uh, and of the results, that you see the results on the right side, the shape is, um, is similar. Uh, you know, it, it allows you to define pretty precisely the shape of the JSON that you want to get uh, and you, as your results. And also select exactly uh, what fields you want to get or not. We'll see a bit more about that in the in the demo. So this is the basics of GraphQL uh, uh, as a query language. And this is, GraphQL is driven by a schema which defines the, the data models that you can query, the data types and everything. Um, and the in interesting thing in the Sling GraphQL core is that the schema is generated by an internal Sling request with a .gql schema extension which means you can use all the flexibility of Sling to generate these schemas, make them specific to resource types, and we'll see that in the demo. I think that's a very interesting uh, aspect of this, uh, this module. And the schema can be introspected. The clients like GraphQL allow you to look into the schema, find out what about the available types and available queries that you can make. So this is very useful uh, you know, as a discovery mechanism to discover your data. Uh, we're going to see now how it works more concretely. So this is a, a demo. Um, it's a, a demo website that I created in the Sling Samples module using the, the Sling uh, GraphQL core. So let me start by showing you the, uh, the, the, the website. So the demo website, it's a very simple website. It shows articles about uh, various topics, uh, you know, uh, categories, news, culture, and so on. Uh, the articles, the text is generated by, uh, by a simple algorithm, so text is a bit uh, funky. Um, and there's many links. Uh, you know, it's very, uh, very rich navigation. You can navigate to next article. Uh, the articles have C also. If I click the first one, we see this article about Solon Davis. You can also uh, search articles which have a given set of tags. You can see the URL here. It's, uh, you know, it's uh, the tag separated by plus signs. So it's a very rich navigation. It's very fast because it's, uh, it is server-side rendered, as, we, as we'll see. And a nice thing about it is that um, it's driven by, uh, I mean, you have a nice JSON uh, rendering as well. You get that for free with this with this uh, mechanism that we're using. So here, for example, I'm I'm showing the the JSON of an article. First, you have a navigation section which has uh, you know points to the root of the of the article's uh, tree, the previous next article, and so on. The search page, the various sections. So all this is nicely rendered in this uh, navigation element of the JSON, and then you have the JSON of the article itself with the title, tags, see also elements that we saw before, and the text of the article itself. So a uh, nicely shaped JSON, which is driven by a GraphQL uh, query, as we'll see. So as I said, all these, uh, the basic article pages are, are server-side uh, rendered, and there's one page that is client-side rendered. It's the search page, 
this one. So when, when I do a search, it does an actual request. It shows me two articles uh, only <laughs> with this query. And then I can refine the query by activating or deactivating here. I'm, you know, activating, deactivating the business section. And this filtering happens client side. Uh, if we look at the source code of this search page, so you see here the GraphQL query is executed, executed client side by making a request to the Sling GraphQL servlet. And then you have the rendering, which is, uses handlebars templates client side in this case. So it, in, in our demo website, it's only the search page which is uh, client side rendered because it's more dynamic than the, than the others. And then I can also show you uh, the GraphQL tool. So it's a client side tool to, uh, to do queries, which we have here. So uh, on the left, I have a query similar to the one we saw before. It's the same query uh, search text little, which gives me only two articles. So you see the two articles on the right. And here in the query, I can define, OK, if I say I don't want the tags field anymore, I can remove it from the query, run the query again. And now I have only the path of the articles. And it's here that I can introspect the schema with uh, this docs button here on the right of, Graph of GraphQL, which allows me to see the schema. Oh, I see that there's an article uh, object in the schema. Um, you know, path, title, and so on. So this is this is the schema of the article itself. I see that it has a path, a title, tags, and so on. So then I can use the fields. I can say, okay, I want to see the section, for example. Also, um, you know, so it's all very convenient to have this schema introspection for uh, to be able to uh, to discover the the schema. So this is you know this is a kind of an overview of this um, of this uh, sample you have uh, here on the slide the various things that I just mentioned so all the pages on the left are uh, server side rendered with GraphQL and handlebars running server side the search page is rendered client side as we mentioned using the same tools GraphQL queries handlebars templates and you can also run client side queries directly with a suitable a GraphQL client like GraphQL that we use here. So it's very flexible and this is all uh, driven by the Sling GraphQL core with little, you know, you, you just need to write your GraphQL mo uh, schemas and the data fetchers that we'll see. So there's not a lot of code to write to, to create a sample like, like this. Uh, let's discuss rendering a bit more. So this is how the client side query and rendering works. Not <laughs> nothing very special, you know. So the the client does a POST request, an HTTP POST with the GraphQL query that we saw in GraphQL. It goes to the Sling GraphQL servlet on the right here, which you know uh, queries the Sling content repository of wh or whatever you want to query. It's it's uh, it's completely uh, pluggable, programmable. And then you get the JSON results. And in this case, they're formatted running handlebars templates on the client. So this is kind of the, you know, the usual way of using GraphQL uh, with the benefit that you can define the queries on the client and it's very flexible from the client's point of view and it's only using uh, front-end programming technology. So uh, quite simple to, to set up. And now this is the server side query and rendering that I that my sample is most of my samples pages are using, um, and this works using Sling internal requests. So, um, okay, the Sling scripts resolver is called as usual. It resolves to a .hbs script, which is calls my handlebar script engine, and this makes an internal request to the same path to the same resource with a .json extension. So handlebars uses the, the JSON rendering provided by Sling of the current resource and applies templates to it to generate the, the HTML or whatever you want to, to generate. Uh, and then there's another internal request done by the GraphQL script engine uh, to, the, to generate the schema. So to render this page server side, there's actually three Sling requests, the main one for the HTML page, then the JSON request that gets a JSON using whatever you have configured. And if you have configured a GQL, a GraphQL server-side script for that, 
Then it calls the GraphQL script engine, which in turn makes another internal sling request for the schema. So it's a bit uh, inception, you know, three, uh, three requests going on at the same time, but it gives lots of flexibility to do this server-side uh, rendering. I'm using handlebars here so that I could use the same one on the client on server side. Of course, you could use any suitable uh, template engine. Uh, for the prototype, this was a very simple thing to, to set up, so I found that uh, useful. A few words about the GraphQL core internals, how it works. Um, so currently, we're, the release is 004, uh, so it, you know, it's still uh, early days for this module, but it's still working pretty well. Um, it provides, as mentioned, a script engine. You see here on the top right, the GraphQL script engine, which uh, 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 works for scripts with the GQL extension. So these scripts define the queries that you want to run server-side. There's a GraphQL servlet, which is the, the access point, the entry point that the GraphQL client or server-side set search page was, was using. Uh, you, you could configure multiple uh, instances of this servlet if you want, with different schemas, with different access control if you want, so it's, so it's pretty flexible. And then the API, uh, the core of the API, I think the, the most important class uh, or interface that you'll use from the API is a Sling Data Fetcher, which is uh, the object that does the actual query. So the GraphQL core parses the queries and then it delegates to these data fetchers to get the actual data. We'll see an example in one of the next slides. Uh, the schema provider, as mentioned, uh, so the schema provider is an OSGI service, so you could plug your own uh, if you want, but the default one does, as mentioned, an internal request to Sling, so it, it makes a request to the current resource with a GQL schema extension. So once again, you benefit from the uh, full flexibility of Sling, uh, from the full flexibility of Sling, to uh, to generate these schemas using any any technology that that uh, works for you. So this is all very uh, very flexible. Here's a data fetcher that we mentioned. So the interface uh, basically it has just one method, which is this get method that we see here, which is can return either a POJO, uh, plain you know a Java object, or a map. Where the or, or key values map, which is what we s we see here in this example. So uh, you have to implement this. Uh, the schema will point to a data fetcher using a schema directive, and then you have to implement these data fetchers to provide the actual data. So the, uh, it, the there's a few default ones, but in general you will have to define your own. And this is where the you know this where you have to be careful about performance and all this. We'll we'll talk a bit more about this. Uh, the Sling GraphQL core also supports server-side scripts for these uh, data fetchers, so you could script them in any uh, any uh, suitable language that's supported by Sling. Here we have a uh, simple example in JavaScript, in server-side JavaScript once again. So um, you can these data fetchers in the end they are just OSGI services, so you can implement them uh, how, however you you want. Um, we about performance, so this is one topic that often comes up when we speak about GraphQL. You know, all these very open queries, what's going to happen, uh, are the clients going to do crazy things to my data and, you know, create a, a full table, the equivalent of full table scans or something. Um, so this is what happens when you run a GraphQL query, uh, for example, from GraphQL as we saw. So the, the data path is that GraphQL will call the Sling uh, GraphQL servlet, which is part of the GraphQL core. This in turn calls the schema generation, the, the orange part that we, saw, we see here. So as mentioned, this is a Sling internal request. So here, uh, in general, you're just generating text, so it should be efficient, but you still have to be careful uh, already. Then we're using the GraphQL Java library, which takes care of the parsing, validation of the queries, and delegates to the Sling Data Fetcher services. And as mentioned, the Sling Data Fetchers is really where the performance happens, because the, these are going to collect and uh, aggregate and do you know, any processing to the data that you need. And then GraphQL Java just uh, kind of you know, transparently sends the results to the, to the client. So it's really... Uh, 
when you create these linked data fetchers and the graphical schemas, you're really defining an API, you know, an API to your data. And you have to be careful. You have to think about performance. You have to think about how many of these fetchers you, you're calling, maybe profile them. So really the, the performance is, uh, is up to you, I would say. And as we evolve, we'll probably provide more uh, out-of-the-box data fetchers uh, which can be optimized, but uh, at, this, at the current state, you, you have to really provide your own data fetchers and be careful. So I, I would say that uh, the answer to is GraphQL uh, going to cause performance problems, uh, my answer would be it depends on the efficiency and the structure of your data fetcher services. Another aspect related to performance is, is caching, and I think caching is a problem with GraphQL. It, it wasn't, I don't think it was part of the initial design of GraphQL, uh, and uh, in our context of, of websites or large-scale web websites, caching is very important, and especially HTTP caching, because we already have caches and CDNs, you know, content distribution networks, we can do that caching, provided that we, we follow the, the HTTP style for that. So uh, what we did, and this is similar to what the Apollo uh, library is doing for, for caching, is the problem is uh, GraphQL queries are post requests. So in principle, those are not cacheable, or most caches are not configured to cache them. So you need to, to be cacheable at the HTTP level, you need to do a get. And this is so. This is what we we've implemented now in the GraphQL core. Uh, to to do a cache friendly request, you first need to post the query text uh, to to a special path, which is uh, will persist the request and and return a, a 201 uh, HTTP status, saying okay, the, the, we have created a persisted request, and uh, and you can now use it. And to use it, you do a get to the to the path that was provided. And this runs actually runs the GraphQL the GraphQL query, returns the results with HTTP headers, cache control headers, which make it cacheable. So you have to kind of prepare your queries in advance, then you can run them with GET requests, and then you get the query results, and these will be cached in your uh, you know usual I would say HTTP cache or CDN in the front end. This is still evolving. We're still working on this. It will probably be refined. But I think that's a good mechanism to, to you know, to to enable large-scale HTTP-driven caching on these uh, queries. Uh, we're almost uh, at the end, but uh, this this was part of the title, and I think it's an important topic. How about GraphQL and REST? Uh, we often hear that you know people tend to say, "Oh, GraphQL is the opposite of REST." I don't think this makes sense. And uh, Phil Sturgeon quoted here. Uh, agrees. Uh, he says the biggest oddity I noticed with the GraphQL with REST conversation is a falsehood that you must pick one. You don't have to pick one. You know, GraphQL is a query language. REST is an architectural style, and I think we can find interesting ways of marrying them. And and hopefully my sample demonstrates some of this by running GraphQL queries on the server side. It's a very nice way to aggregate content and prepare a nice JSON that you can consume uh, in your templates. And then, uh, you know, hide them between between a normal HTTP resource-driven uh, API. So I think that's one way, one uh, way that I, f I find interesting of marrying them. We also saw in the caching section uh, that it's good to think about both HTTP and GraphQL concerns. So I, I would say, you know, it's uh, I don't think it's one or the other. I think we can find definitely find interesting ways of marrying them. And one thing is that GraphQL is certainly better than a, than a badly designed so-called REST API. You know, we see many HTTP APIs which claim to be RESTful, maybe because the URL contains slash REST or something, and it you know it's uh, they're not always well designed. So GraphQL can be can be better than that. But as we said, when you're creating the GraphQL, uh, the Sling data fetchers, you are defining an API to your data. So it's no, it's still going to be complicated at some point if your program is complicated. Okay, so I'm at the, I'm at the end of this talk. We'll have uh, uh, some time for for questions and and answers, hopefully. Um, so in summary. I, I like GraphQL, I think it's a very nice query language. And I think it can also be useful on the server side. And we're seeing, you know, as we, as we evolve in this, uh, in this path, 
and and we see the 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 caching concerns for example uh, i think there's definitely a place for graphql on the server side as well as the client side both are useful uh, and as i said i don't think it's better or worse than rest they are very different animals and they they can play nicely together uh, and hopefully my my sample demonstrates this you have links at the bottom of the of this slide. Uh, the slides will be available, so you can really, uh, you know, look at the GraphQL core in more detail, play with it, uh, you know, pro make pull requests if you see things that we can improve, and um, and the sample is linked from the GraphQL core module page. It's in the Sling samples um, module, and I just have a link here to the fake content generator. I think that's a fun tool if you need to generate text for for. Uh, samples like like this one that's very useful thank you for listening and uh, let's uh, see if we have uh, some questions that i can answer uh, i would be happy to thanks okay so the real me is back <laughs> the one with the blue shirt the other one had a red shirt uh, i have just one question so far from jean christophe uh, about the um the search page uh, making a post request and he says Shouldn't that be a get because it's not doing any modifications? So um, it's uh, it, it, this was a bit explained in the caching on the caching uh, slide. Uh, of course, uh, theoretically it should be a get because it's not uh, making any modifications. The problem with get is that you have to pass the uh, the query, and this the query can get big, uh, you know, because you can put lots of details in the query how you want to 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 uh, see things, what's the shape of the resulting JSON. My queries are extremely simple, but in, in a real project, they will be uh, more complicated. So get can be a problem because the, the, the URL might become too big and, and often intermediaries like the servlet container or some maybe some HTTP front ends will complain and drop the drop the request if it's too large. So that, that's that's the problem with the, with the get request. It's usually not practical to, to put arbitrary GraphQL queries behind get requests. And that's why we did this thing where we prepare the queries. So with a post, send the query in advance, and then you use a get to execute it. So hopefully that, uh, that answers your question. Um, I see a question by Nicola. Um, so I, uh, yeah, I need, okay. I need to click it, the uh, queue for live answer. Um, uh, would you get would you use GraphQL as an internal aggregation mechanism? Yes, definitely. I think it's a, it's a very nice mechanism for to do this kind of aggregation, uh, and that's that's what the sample is doing. If you if you look at it, so the sample is in the is in the Sling samples module, so the code is in GitHub. Um, the thing in my sample, I, I'm generating GraphQL first and then repassing it to apply templates to it. That's not optimal. We might have a better way where we, you know where we just generate an object structure and let the templates uh, grab it. So it, but it's a, it's a prototype. But yeah, I, I'm doing that. I quite like the I quite like the mechanism. I think that that can be a good uh, good good way of working. I see some things in the chat. Um, I don't think there's more questions. There's three minutes left if someone wants to ask a last question. Otherwise, you know, it's Sling, so you're welcome on the, on the Sling dev list to ask questions, play with this stuff. You have all the links. And the next talk is also about GraphQL from a more, uh, you know, concrete product side. So I think that will be interesting, and I'm looking forward to it. Um, I see one more question. Yes, when you, so let me do that right. Oops, sorry. <laughs> Suppose some, someone was queuing it. Okay, got it now. When you post your request, is it processed on post or is it processed when the get is called to fetch the result? So if you use the GraphQL uh, HTTP API directly, like from GraphQL, uh, the, then it's directly processed by the, the post request calls the pr processing directly. It, if you look at the GraphQL core, there's the one server that does just that. If you use the caching mechanism with the persisted queries, so you first post the query text, and it's only the query text that is stored. The query is just minimally, I would say, validated. And we say, OK, if it looks OK from a syntax point of view, we, we store it. And then when you do the get, get, the get it is executed. 
So I think that was your, your question. We are this, we discussed the mechanism where we do the uh, redirect. So you, you would post the query text and it redirects you to the get. Uh, that might be a good idea. We haven't done that so far. One thing that I didn't maybe didn't stress enough in the slide when you do the when you use the caching mechanism with the post is that the URL that you get back is the digest of the query text. So you could you could uh, pre-compute this URL, and if you think you're lucky, you could try to do a get directly without doing the post. And if another client has already done the same request, then you will find the results already in the HTTP cache. That's a kind of the idea. If uh, if you have uh, you know if many clients are doing the same requests. With this mechanism, they will get the, the results already in the HTTP cache. Uh, another question, will this feature rely on the existing indexes? So if you're, uh, if you're speaking of uh, live indexes, of sorry, of JCR indexes, then yes, uh, you know, in this in the Sling Data Fetcher, you you can call, you will call the usual usual JCR APIs, and this will use indexes if they are configured properly. So we are at time for the next uh, talk, so I will stop here. Uh, thank you, and maybe I'll stay in this room for a bit. Uh, I don't know if the chat still works, but uh, I encourage you to go to the next talk, which is also about GraphQL. Thank you very much. Too bad we can't have a drink together, but that will be next time.